Welcome once again here to Bethel University in Mishawaka, Indiana. It is my distinct pleasure to talk Bethel baseball with the skipper of the Bethel Pilots. Glad to be joined here with uh, the head coach of the Pilots, Seth Zartman, who's in his 20th season. We came in together. It's one of the most unique situations. I was uh, doing men's um, basketball here for Coach Mike Lightfoot. Yep. And uh, Mike was leaving to go to, uh, to the Air Force Academy. You were coming back home. Uh, we got it together and we, we've been working together for 20 years. I know where I'm going to be every spring besides working on my annual Indiana Football <laughs> Digest is hanging out at Jenkins Stadium. It has been a blast. And boy, has the game changed a lot in, in our tenure. Sure. I has. mean, just from the physical aspect <clears throat> of the way the bat is, yep. the way the ball is, the way right. the game is played. Uh, the one thing has been a fixture is you've been there. I've been there, and Jenkins Stadium has been there. That's right. We've lost some of our dearest friends yes. and over the course of our, our careers, and we've seen some tremendous athletes. We've seen some tremendous experiences, but the one thing that's been constant is we've been hanging out every spring watching the green grass grow. That's right. At absolutely. Jenkins Stadium. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. Or right? hoping that it grows, yeah, right? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. No, so, it has. It's been very cool. Yes. Okay, so you're number 21, right? What's different? Or is this going to be well, – so this will be 20? This is 20, yep. Okay, so you're yep. 20. Yep. What's different than year one? Notice. Wow. And oh. we can't talk about the talent level because that's not even in the equation. Can so. I say age? Yeah. <laughs> yeah our, our, both of our waist sides have grown. But one thing, one, waist but one, size. But one that's thing, right. But one thing is for certain is this. <laughs> Seth has this on his uh, resume. By the, being a Bethel University Hall of Famer, 1997 All-American, two-time All-Conference player in Bethel men's baseball history. Lifetime batting average, 373, number 10 all-time. Slugging percentage at 625, that's number 8, eight all-time. Batting average, 259 hits, number 4 all-time. 432 bases, which is number 2 all-time. And number 7 all-time games played with 199. That's just as an athlete. We're not going to talk about the wins. So there you <laughs> exactly. go. There's your setup. There we go. I appreciate that. No, I mean honestly, you know, Paul, you look at you look at the game, you know, compared to year one to, to now, or what's different. I mean, you know, I think obviously just you know my wisdom as a coach, and believe me, I've not arrived yet. But I I, I think there's so much to say about 20 years more, or 19 years more of coaching than year one. Sure where you've had that opportunity to learn, you know, and, and get to know other, um, you know, uh, legendary coaches or veteran coaches who you've learned so much from. Um, but also, you know, honestly, the difference between day one is just the type of athlete that we deal with in today's world compared to, you know, late 90s, early 2000s. Um, and so I would say one of the biggest things for me is just learning how to adapt over time with the generation of athlete that we're working with. Um, and and that's, that's huge because I, I feel like coaches today, if you're not willing to do that, then it's time, it's time to get out. And so that's probably been one of the biggest changes for me um, is, is dealing with that over the years of seeing that, that uh, you know, just what kind of athlete we recruited back then, that it's morphed into of what we are recruiting today. Um, and, and honestly, how we need to teach them and how we need to work with them and how we needed to develop them, um, I, I, I believe, is a whole different realm today. Well, I would say the single biggest difference is the, the type of students we have today and the things that they, are, they have around them. Social yeah. media as a perfect Absolutely. example. And, and you know this. You, you've got kids of your own. You've got to keep an eye on some of those kind of things, and that could be – uh, really a damaging issue if it's yeah. allowed to be and you sure. have to be careful but one thing is also is, is unique is not only as you have you grown spiritually on how you coach and you've had some you've had a couple teams so on the year who you butted heads with because they just they refuse to uh, you know kind of get with the program if you will and, right. And, right. and that sometimes steals the joy of what you love to do sure. and what God's called you to do but I know that in talking with the boys this year that is one thing that is not a negative situation. This group is 
spiritually going in the right direction. And it's really, really neat. And it's not about uh, having a winning record in the Crossroads League or being, you know, an NEI national tournament team every year. It's about the spiritual development. And right. that's really been your end all since day one, since I've known you. But I've seen it deepen as you've grown older. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. You know, if, if somebody asks, you know, what is the most important thing to this whole coaching gig? And that's exactly it. It's to build the relationships and it's to see these guys grow spiritually. And, you know, if, if I've not accomplished anything else in my coaching gig, you know, I, I, I want every guy that leaves my program, whether they've made a decision or not as the direction of their life, but to, I can honestly say I hurt Coach Zartman was able to clearly communicate what the gospel of Jesus Christ was all about. And that's huge. And, you know, and, and honestly, then to watch these guys go on and to be dads, husbands, you know, great fixtures in their community, you know, is just a great, great thing. And obviously you see them years later and they got their own kids. And so that's, it, that's what it's about. That's what makes it worth it. Um, and that's what I still have a passion for today, um, just to try to come alongside them and be an encouragement, and you know, just be a just be a mouthpiece of what God's where God's put us. Well, one of the great parts of your career, when you look back on it, is you were blessed to have a, a great man of God who was your head coach and yes. Sam Riggleman, yep. one of the greatest coaches. Many people will tell you, a nationally renowned guy and one of the all-time best. And I just going to paraphrase the things that uh, the last time I talked to Sam was, he said, Cez Hartman has d did it the right way as a player and has done it in the right way as a coach. And anybody who's going to come through his program is going to be better for it. So when you think about someone like mm -hmm. Sam Riggleman saying those kind of things, right? I mean, how does that make you feel, coach? Well, you're humbled for, for right off the bat, right? Um, you know, the opportunity to not only have to, to, to have got to know Sam and but really to play under him and to really be a byproduct of what he did on a daily basis you know what he professed and what he believed in and how he pushed you and worked you and you know that type of thing and you know for that for those type of things to come from him many years later you know is is a very humbling but um, kind of a proud moment you know because you know, it, it was an honor to play for him. And my life direction completely changed because of him and what he did for my life. Um, you know, and, and the first thing in that is just to give me an opportunity. You know, I didn't know if I would have that opportunity after being injured, coming out of my senior year of high school. He gave me an opportunity. He believed in me. And, um, and then I, I obviously just developed, developed me spiritually um, in what, what a good foundation looked like you know, as you get out into that real world. Well, I know that uh, you're excited about this team. We're going to talk about the team now, but uh, mm -hmm. you've got some coaches that uh, really work hard at their, their craft. And I know we always jo uh, joke a lot with Kyle Boynton, your uh, pitching coach. Yep. Uh, I mean, he's, you know, his love for the Los Angeles Dodgers is... Uh, <laughs> is it's disgusting. It's almost, Let's just yeah, say it, right? I mean, I mean <laughs> not the fact that, uh, you know, we may be Cubs fans or, That's right. or Orioles fans or whatever fans we may be. Or Cleveland Indians fans, for all that matter. Yeah. So, yeah. but uh, let's talk about your coaching. So. Yeah. You know, I, Paul, I, I can't say enough great things about my coaches. Kyle has been with me since 2015, and that was really a pivotal year, you know, for me, you know, uh, really needing a a pitching guy to come in. You know, we were at that point in, sure. in, in you know, kind of a staff over, over change and, um, you know, and, and, I look back and it really was a God thing in that moment. You know, it took over a year to get him, finally get him out here. Um, but it's really what, it, and honestly, it's what I needed too in that point in my career. You know, I was doing all the recruiting myself and, you know, for many doing years. Doing everything, plus yeah, taking care of the field. Yeah, and to have somebody that's passionate about recruiting to join my staff, it really was rejuvenating because I didn't have to carry the whole load. Um, but Coach K just does a fantastic job, you know, with the pitchers. And in other areas too, you know, he, he was a dual guy, so he played middle infield, so he can coach middle infielders. He can, you know, so to have to have a coaching staff where everybody's kind of well-rounded. Now, don't ask me to go lead a group of pitchers pitchers to be successful. That's his his gig. But 
Um, but just what he does for our program is is I'm very thankful to to have him part of my staff. And then with with Rob and and uh, Coach Boynton, John Boynton, um, Coach K's dad, you know, just volunteers. And, and and you know this over the time you spent with me, a lot of a lot of years it's. You know, you have maybe a main guy, but then you're trying to get some volunteers to come in and help. And, you know, they, they have been tremendous. You know, they're excitable. They're very excited to be doing what they do on a daily basis. And, again, it's great to have extra hands in there that can help out and do some things. And so I, I just appreciate them very much, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful that, that they want to spend part of their weeks with us. You don't win baseball games if you don't have good pitching. So that, that's well, right. So let's start with the pitching staff. And obviously, we talked to Frank Plezak, who was a, a Crossroads League preseason player uh, on the, all the preseason team. So he's yep. one guy at a great way to get start. You've had some great ones. You've played against some great ones. And you know some guys have been in the program. Yep. Of course, there's some guys whose uh, jerseys are hanging here uh, on the campus or in sure. the clubhouse. Uh, but let's talk about your current baseball pitching team yeah you know and, and 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 I think you said it there you know uh, you know Frank really is kind of the anchor of that pitching staff you know and and then we you know we work from there but you think about guys like Ty Mikowitz and um, you know the Brad Van Overbergs and the Andrew Gerbers and you know guys who have experience um, and you know we've also been able to add some depth in that pitching staff you know uh, Noah Borwich who came in last year as a transfer and um, you know, we've added some freshmen, you know, guys, you know, senior relievers, you know, Hunter and Sam, Hunter Christ and Sam Lewin, Lewandowski, you know, just guys who have been in the trenches and have experience, you know, and really with our pitching staff right now, we, we feel really, really good about the starting pitching, you know, um, but we also feel good about the relievers that we'll be able to put out there as well. And right now, you know, we're healthy, you know, we're deep. And you got to feel really good about that going into the year, but we all know until we get on the field, you know, we got to we, we got to go out and 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 take that preparation and put it on the field and do the best that we can. But you know, right now we they've been working hard, they're focused in, and they're they're ready to go out and compete. Everyday grouping, you look at uh, what they did last year, uh, and with a core group come almost the entire core group coming back. Yep, uh, as a team batted 280. As a season, slugging percentage was at 377, on base at 374. So you've <clears> got <throat> some guys that can hit the ball. You know, one yep. thing that's changed a lot since you and I uh, started is the ball's just not leaving the ballpark because of the bats and the balls right. are different. Right. I don't know if we're ever going to see the days of, of the Guevara boys or when the or the Jimenez's. <laughs> is, you yeah. Know, and, the, and boy, I look back on some of those games where we saw. Eight home runs and a doubleheader. Yeah, I mean, I mean, think about it now. You guys finished last year with 26 home runs. Right. And there were some teams a couple of years back where there may have been only 10 or 11 home runs. Correct. Yes. So the game has changed a lot in regards to, uh, and, and, and I always go back to the, one of my all-time favorite baseball quotes was by Earl Weaver says, "We're going to win by the three-run home run." <laughs> you don't play baseball at the college level, especially here yeah. in Northern Indiana, by waiting on a three-run bomb because it's just not going to happen. So. No. Your everyday lineup is pivotal, and you've got to be able to play ball and manufacture runs. Correct. So let's just talk about – because you've had to change your style right? from when you started because you had some talented groups early on Correct. where you could wait and play for a three-round bomb. Yeah. Because it was going to come. It was, yeah. It was either going to be in the third <laughs> inning or it was going to be in the fifth inning. No, that's and that's exactly right. You know, and – you know, and, and you think about back to those early years, you know, we didn't have the bat standards that we have today right. where, you know, the, the, they've, they've, the, the bats have become more dense. You know, they're, they're really close. They're, they're, I should say, more close to a wood bat standard, you know, mm -hmm. than, a, than a, what we knew. And back yeah. in those days, you know, you had bats that were really the trampoline effect was for real, you know, yes. when people talked about it. Um, so, yeah, you know, and, 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 and I – you think over the years of, of that adaptation, you know, because balls aren't leaving the yard as often, you know, and that type of thing. And that is a really hard philosophy to have, you know, I believe in today's game, you know, you, you've got to be, I believe, well-rounded. You know, you got to be able to take what the game is giving you in that particular day. Um, and we feel like in our preparation starting in the fall that we prepare our guys for you know, a lot of those game type of situations, you know, we, we've got to be able to bunt the ball. We've got to be able to hit and run. We've got to be able to move guys over, you know, and those are things, those are important things for the game. 
And, you know, we go back and we talk about all the time that we're going to practice things that are important. You know, we're not going to practice fluff. You know, if, if, if we're potentially going to use it, we're going to practice it. And so it, it really comes down to doing what the game will give us. You know, and another, another thing that we've really tried to hammer in the last three, three to five years um, is in our base running is really getting guys focused in on recognizing a dirt ball or recognizing, you know, a ball that, you know, a spin ball that maybe is going to fall short, you know, that we can take advantage of taking an extra base just on a little bit of a miscue um, where we can get a read and go. Um, so, yeah, it is different. And, you know, I tell our guys all the time, you know, I don't care if you're the three-hole hitter, six-hole hitter, eight-hole hitter. If we need a bunt down, be ready, you know, because we may need a bunt down. And so, yes, we have definitely um, had to change. You know, we've definitely had to morph into being able to manufacture runs in other ways than counting on the double, triple, or home run all the time. All right, let's talk about the, the, uh, the lineup. Uh, who are you anticipating making big plays? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you, you know, if you look at you look at some of the guys that are back in the field, you know, uh, Eli McDonald, you know, who's been a mainstay at shortstop for us, you know, looking for him, Jeremy Wiersma, Alex Stout, you know, those guys on the infield, you know, we are definitely looking to make big plays, you know, routine plays, you know, all the time. Um, you know, our two catchers, Dominic and, and um, Corbin, you know, with another year of experience under those guys, sure. I feel really solid, really confident that they're going to get the job done behind the plate. Um, and honestly, I think, you know, Andrew Miranda, who's back for his last year, you know, I look for Andrew to continue to continue up in his game, but I think he'll make some good plays for us too. So, you know, you look at, you look at those guys, you know, and a lot of those guys, you know, like Eli and, and Alex and, you know, Dominic and, and Corbin, I mean, those are hard of the lineup bats you know as well so you know I'm looking for those guys to step up really big you know we've got some freshmen that have come in and really done a nice job um, this fall um, in their preparation their development you know so you know you may see some faces you know here and there doing some things you know that that uh, you know we may need at a particular time on the field so you know I I, I think because you have we have a decent number of veterans coming back you know you look for those guys those are the guys that you're going to look to, to to make something happen, get a rally started, you know, set the tone. Um, and I, I think those guys fall into that category. Says Hartman, the baseball coach here at Bethel University, he starts his uh, 20th season. It's been a privilege of mine to spend the springs with him here at uh, the Mishawaka campus. Looking forward to get out there between where the green grass grows at uh, Jenkins Sand. Skipper, thanks for hanging out with us today. Thank you, Paul. I always enjoy it. Once again, that's going to do it for our coverage of Bethel Baseball. Thanks for joining us here on Regional Radio Sports.